Kroiso y Kum Elan. Welcome to the Elan Valley. It's been a while since I filmed a vlog here, one of my favorite places in Wales, but we've got beautiful crystal clear skies, no wind, perfect conditions. There's a good opportunity to photograph a combination of two things that I haven't photographed together before. So because it's March and we're close to the equinox, there's gonna be the zodiacal light in that direction after sunset. And then roughly here somewhere, we're gonna get a really bright International Space Station flyover. So I'm hoping to catch those two in the same photograph and I'm gonna try and capture them with my Sony full frame mirrorless camera, but also with an iPhone 13 Pro, which I've recently picked up. So keeping my expectations low, but at the same time, I'm pretty hopeful that this is gonna produce a fairly decent image. So I'm gonna get going. I've gotta go hiking up that steep and treacherous hill there to find a nice composition before it gets dark. Uh, so I better get moving. <laughs> So now that I have an Apple device, one of the apps that I'm most looking forward to using is an app called Sky Guide, which is only available on iOS. It's basically a night sky emulator, much like Stellaria, which I've been using for years, except rather than a simulation of the night sky, it uses actual photographs. So Nick Reisinger, the guy behind the app, captured the entirety of the night sky from the northern and southern hemispheres and used them to create this app. So the photographs you take look very much like what you see in the app because they are photographs of the night sky. But there is one caveat, and that is that Nick captured the images with an astro-modified camera. So if your camera is not astro-modified, it'll still look very much like what you see in the app, but you just won't get the red hydrogen clouds that you can capture with an astro-modified camera because you need to remove some filters from your camera in order to pick up those wavelengths of light. But if you don't know what an astro-modified camera is, you don't understand what I'm talking about, you can check out a video on my channel all about astro-modified cameras, what they are, how you can modify them, etc., etc. And there's another feature of Sky Guide that's pretty awesome, and that's the augmented reality view. So you can hold your camera, the smartphone camera, up to the sky, and it will show you where the stars will be in relation to the landscape. So it's something that you kind of have to use in the daytime, otherwise you won't be able to see um, the foreground. Of course, the augmented reality still works, but you can't really see uh, the foreground on your smartphone camera. The only downside I see to Sky Guide is that scrubbing through dates and times is bit of a pain so there's no quick and easy way to change the date and time you have to go into the settings and change the date and time manually so you kind of have to leave the main screen of the app which is kind of annoying because with Stellarium you just get these little arrow buttons so you can change the hour the minute or the date very easily so if you want to see how a planet is moving day by day you can very quickly change the day by 24 hours for example and scrubbing through time is also not the best. You have to either fast forward time or sort of fast backward time and, and kind of stop it when you get to the time that you want to check out. Whereas on Stellarium, you have a little bar at the bottom which you can slide with your thumb very quickly to get to any sort of time of the night as you want. So I'll probably still find myself using Stellarium quite a lot because it's just so much more user friendly for scrubbing through dates and times um, but sky guide is just stunning it just looks amazing and that augmented reality view is uh, it's going to be really useful in the future so looking forward to using that app and as i was waiting for darkness to fall i was setting my camera up and i was sickened by the sight 
of another trail of starling satellites making their way into low earth orbit. And at this time of year, as the nights are getting shorter and brighter, as we approach summer, the amount of satellites you can see in the night sky now is just heartbreaking. It's crazy how much of a difference there's been in the five or six years that I've been doing astrophotography. So if you didn't know what the zodiacal light is, it is this triangular diffuse glow that you can see here and it's caused by dust in the same plane as the planets scattering sunlight back into the night sky. In the northern hemisphere during spring it's best seen just after the evening twilight and there's another good opportunity to see it in the morning twilight of autumn mornings as well. And if you'd like to learn more about astronomy and astrophotography, you should check out the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives who want to follow their curiosity and learn new skills. There's even a number of astrophotography classes available too, so sticking with the theme of Milky Way photography, you should really check out Ian Norman's class on Nightscape's landscape astrophotography. It covers the gear you need, exposing for the Milky Way and processing your images as well. I recently completed Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class and picked up so many tips that I'm applying to my own YouTube channel to hopefully improve the quality of these videos. If you'd like to give Skillshare a try, they're giving away a one month free trial to the first 1000 people that click the link in the video description down below. You get full premium access to all of the courses you can try as many as you like in that month. So what are you waiting for? Hit that link in the video description down below. Okay, so I've been working the composition and the iPhone, the super wide camera is not as good as the, the normal 1x zoom. So I can't get the zodiacal light and the ISS pass in the same image. So I'm just gonna focus on the International Space Station first and then I'll try and get a shot of the zodiacal light after that. But with my Sony mirrorless camera, I've mounted that on top of the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. And this is gonna allow me to take exposures of multiple minutes without getting any star trailing. Because it's gonna take a couple of minutes for the space station to pass through the frame, I could take a long exposure of two to three minutes and I won't have any star trailing and I'll have a nice long International Space Station trail. So it's a bit complicated adding extra moving parts, a little bit of extra risk, but the test shots so far have been great. So fingers crossed nothing goes wrong. And then once I've captured the Space Station Pass and the night sky, I'll pan down to shoot the foreground and create a panorama out of those images. All right, so we are one minute away from the International Space Station appearance. I'm just getting ready, uh, keeping an eye out for it. Got the phone ready, got my camera nearly ready. <laughs> okay, so looking good, looking good. I think I can see the space station. Is that the space station? No, it's just a star. No, it is the space station. All right, so the iPhone can shoot for a maximum of 30 seconds and I'm shooting in RAW, which is awesome. You can shoot RAW on smartphones these days. And hopefully the International Space Station will be visible on this video shortly. It's gonna be skirting along the right hand side of Orion, my favorite constellation. So I'm just gonna check that camera's shooting, that's good. The iPhone exposure one is finishing. Hey, we got it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna try again. Looking a little bit red because it's in the light of the sunset at the moment. So. The people on the space station right now, the Russians and the Americans, they can see the sunset because they're so much higher up than we are. And eventually it will fade. 
Oh, I'm going right through Orion. Just gonna keep an eye on this camera over here in case the exposure finishes. I think we're looking good. Oh, right through Orion's heart. Look at that. <laughs> I totally forgot about the iPhone. Well, I got a shot, I think. So this was the image of the ISS that I caught with the iPhone. It's a two-shot panorama, so I could get a bit more foreground in. And the ISS trail is obviously quite short because the iPhone was limited to 30 seconds. But it came out good, probably not as good as I was hoping, but not too bad. I also took a shot of the zodiacal light. And this is just a single exposure, but there's some really funky noise reduction going on, even in the iPhone RAW files, which is a little bit disappointing because... That limits you from being able to stack the images for better image quality. The image captured with my Sony mirrorless camera was obviously way better. I used the star tracker for the sky exposure, so I've got a nice long ISS trail, and then used the same exposure for the foreground. I also added some images with a hydrogen alpha filter that helps to emphasize those red hydrogen clouds that you pick up with an Astro modified camera. But overall, really happy with this final result. Hope you've enjoyed today's vlog, and if you're going to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.